disclaimers uh, uh, message here. I always try to put out the studies that are out there to get vitamin E. There are eight isomers, four tocopherols, we popularly know that, and four tocotrienol. If you see the tail, the green, uh, the red color thing, the tail of a tocotrienol have three double bond, and hence the word triene, three double bond. Otherwise, these uh, two groups of vitamin would be the same. This is a unique vitamin. No, this is a unique chemical, I would say. So unique that it seemed to be the only chemical that reside on the cell wall that is able to protect. See this, this uh, OH group here? It is a uniqueness of this. This whole tail here is stuck into the phospholipid. No other compound work like this. There are just no other compound. There are many antioxidants. There are not a lot of lipid antioxidant. And I care about lipid antioxidant the most because all cells have a cell wall and all the cell wall are lipids and they need to be protected. The first thing that go bad will be the lipid. Yes, protein can go bad and the DNA can go bad, but the fat go bad first. If you don't believe me, you stick a hunk of meat out on a summer day, you will know what I mean. The first off smell is not the protein. The first off smell will be the fat in the meat. Roadkill, same thing. A stick of butter, same thing, like that. So fat is the first thing to go, and protecting fat oxidation is important. And this tocotrienol snuck right into the phospholipid. I have a slide on that. If you look on the uh, uh, published uh, study, you will find this. You will find that of all the vitamin E, the one that is most commonly associated with prevention of diseases are delta tocotrienol, this purple color and gamma tocotrienol. You see it all the way through. This is the most famous one, alpha tocopherol, but it is it doesn't work for most of the studies. And you have read all about it. This is what I believe most of the audience want to come to, to look. Okay, emergent uses, acute and chronic respiratory distress. I purposely put SARS and ARDS. They ask say SARS because it's, SARS is just a convention we put for the coronavirus. Also, SARS can happen to someone with a flu if it's severe enough. But coronavirus in particular, that's why they call it SARS-CoV-2. But if you write it out, it just means severe acute respiratory syndrome. In other words, it's secondary. So the, the bug, the coronavirus, does not directly kill you, but it inundates the lung so badly, so it causes this. So because SARS is used for that, for a communicable disease, for non-communicable disease, they have another phrase called ARDS. It just simply means acute respiratory distress syndrome. What the heck, you know? What is the difference between SARS and ARDS? Does it sound the same to me, you know? So both of them agonize like mad, the respiratory syndrome. Because I live in the last 35 years to do non-communicable disease, I only have these to show you. They are not caused by communicable disease, not even cystic fibrosis, genetic, right? As per you know, COPD you know. However, I'll try to convince you how tocotrienol help in this kind of a distress and it's not different from this kind of a distress caused by SARS. I picked this up from Wall Street. And in that week of April 6 to 12, COVID had, all, had jumped all the way from here and elevate in one week, the number of deaths had become second, second only to heart disease death per week. And third, uh, uh, next only to cancer death. And then I color yellow to let you know what are the comorbidity to COVID. And the closest comorbidity to COVID is COPD. Not a surprising thing. And also chronic kidney disease, flu, fatty liver disease, hypertension like that. So this is just as an aside and lung and metabolic syndrome. The news is just coming up all the more by the day. And I also heard uh, recently uh, that there are clots, at which means uh, tocotrienol is implicated to prevent clots. I wish I did not have enough time to put that together. Another time I would be, it, uh, it decreased platelet aggregation that causes clot like that. 
Another time I'll do that here. I'll stay mostly on the pulmonary thing. So I call this house on fire. If you look at this one here, normally speaking, inflammation is the immune system response to harmful stimuli. It's usually acute, innate, the magnitude is high, duration is short, short, and then it kills the invader bug, and then it protects the host, that it is. So in the case of COVID, now you have hyperinflammation. So it OD on it is on overdrive. So now that's a problem, like that. I mostly focus on this abnormal inflammation. They're usually chronic, like chronic heart condition, liver, kidney, like that, uh, not caused by uh, a bug. The magnitude persists, is not high, and it lasts for a long time, and eventually this harm the host. Usually this is the space I work in. Now to quench inflammation, we wanted to decrease this thing. Right now there's a drug that decreases interleukin-6. Remember, I just showed you an earlier slide, alpha tocopherol increased interleukin-6, not a good direction. And then we wanted the C-reactive protein to increase and all these things. I will show you some of this, how it dropped. And then enzyme, the, we want this enzyme to drop, not go up. Yeah, liver enzyme under stress. And all these antioxidant enzymes, we want it to go up. So to quench the inflammation, we address some of this. And in so doing, to contain the fire for both the chronic type problem, as well as for the inflammation problem, because of the problem of hyperinflammation. And on the hyperinflammation thing, I just, I literally just picked it up today. It's not because I flashed up. This is coming up from Lancet. You can see it just came up two, three weeks ago. It had to do with hyperinflammation and they call this condition here, uh, cytokine storm syndrome. See that? Cytokine storm uh, syndrome. And then I'll read you parts of it. Allow me to do that. I didn't have a slide, I just picked this up. It says that cytokine storm syndrome is hyperinflammation and is caused by acute respiratory distress and is the leading cause of mortality for COVID. Also for those uh, that get COVID, 50% of the patient have this problem. So this is a bad combo. And then it came up with a table that they marked this. One, of course, the temperature is above 103. Another one, the triglyceride shoots up. And also the AST shoots up. And we know for a fact, tocotrienol drop triglyceride and drop AST. I don't know that tocotrienol have antipyritic thing to drop the temperature. That's more a response to the, uh, to the, bac uh, to the bacteria and pathogen. So, um, so now I will have a few slides on COPD and a few slides on asthma. On this first one here, notice that this is uh, on the uh, uh, DNA base. This is lip lipids measurement, protein and amino acid. So when you add tocotrienol, different doses, it dropped about 50%. And on the lipid, drop about 35. On the, on the amino acid and protein, and the protein and amino acid drop 45, 35%. In other words, tocotrienol retard the lung oxidation of this oxidative stress in the lung of this component. They also use the steroid drug. Not surprisingly, the steroid drug, which is good for COPD people, it did not lower the antioxidant potential. Not surprising because steroids are not typically antioxidant. That tocotrienol can do this, not a surprising thing to me. So this is it. In one aspect, when the lung is challenged by COPD. The lung antioxidant enzyme. Total antioxidant, superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione peroxidase. And, and you see it's dose dependent as it increase, increase 45%, and SOD 75%, and catalase 60, and then glutathione peroxidase 45%. And not surprisingly, the prednisone 
which is a steroid, didn't do that. So the improvement of the antioxidant enzyme 55% and the steroid did not do that because the steroid drug is reducing inflammation, it's not an antioxidant. This is a cross section of the actual alveoli. This is a normal, not exposed to secret smoke. And this one is a vehicle. Look at it. This is an example of a cytokine storm. Look at this. It's supposed to be like this. And a little bit of the neutrophil will come here. Instead, a huge amount of neutrophil came in here on overdrive, inundate this. So this alveolar thing cannot do this. So the vehicle is inundated. When they put tocotrienol, it's reduced. There is, there is neutrophil, but not an overkill of neutrophil here. And prednisone does it, but not as good as tocotrienol. Here's an example of doing the inflammation score. So this, this one here, you can just read this where my thing is pointing here. This is an example of a cytokine storm, not as dramatic as a COVID thing because this is from secret smoke, where it's hugely recruiting the neutrophil in and the tocotrino want the, in, want the neutrophil to go there, but not a huge amount so that the alveolar is not able to respond and breathe to exchange carbon dioxide and oxygen. And this is, oh, by the way, this one here is on the acute and the second one is on the chronic. The same thing you see when you have tocotrienol thinner. This is a control, thicker neutrophil and prednisone here. And you can see the epithelial thickness description here. The tocotrienol is um, <clears throat> significant, whereas the prednisone no. And then this is the actual alveolar sac. You see the tocotrienol, you see it smaller. The smaller the sac is, the larger the surface area. And then if you look at the control, the sac become enlarged as it pregnant along enlarge, so the surface area got large, it's not going to be good for the breathing apparatus. So you can read this too, and still write reduce neither of them. So now to summarize on the COPD, how about I give you a moment, you can read this. The acronym of this too is on in here. The amount needed is approximately 500 milligram. It's about four or so pills. Uh, of the delta norm uh, to do this. Remember, this is severe AFA, airways, inflammation by COPD. I'm sure you have questions for this. You can ask me later like that. So let's quickly now go to the asthma model. The same thing on fat oxidation, um, DNA oxidation, and amino acid oxidation. And in all of these, uh, protein oxidation. Toco trying to inhibit the damaging oxidative biomarker by 55%. Toco trying to protect better than steroid by 20%. The steroid one is here on the last column. On the lung oxidation thing, not, not surprisingly, the steroid did, did not improve the lung oxid, antioxidant enzyme. And of course, the toco trying to improve in all of them. You can see it for yourself like that, 65%. This is very important because the asthma inflamed the lung. So it's able to increase the antioxidant to protect the lung. Remember the lung is also where most of the oxygen, ah, you know, is in the lung and in the heart, the two place. So you want antioxidant protection, particularly in the lung. You don't want the alveolar sac to be compromised. And so here, very dramatic, you can see the bronchial epithelium thickness is thin where the tocotrienol is. Thick when in the vehicle control. And the prednisone also thicker than works, but thicker than that of tocotrienol. Here you can see the actual uh, numerical uh, description. Here they colorize the mucus red. So the vehicle very red, lots of mucus. Basically, they're drowning the alveolar sac. They can't breathe. And the tocotrienol, not able to remove all 
but is able to remove significantly. How much significant? At least by half, see? Control this. But this is the only exception where prednisone did better than tocotrienol by removing the mucus. See? There are almost no good, no red in the prednisone. That's why people use spray for it. And here you can read uh, how tocotrienol decreased the mucus hypersecretion. So the hypersecretion here is an example uh, of the cytokine storm. See, it's another example of the cytokine storm. This one here described to you the lung uh, uh, airways resistant. That means the better will be here. In other words, when you, when you exhale, when you exhale, your lung go back. So the closer your lung go to your chest, the better. When you inhale, you want it to go this way. So you want to distend your lung as much as possible. So that's the control. The tocotrienol is able to bring it back close to the control people uh, with asthma. See, is able to get too close to the control than to asthma. So this direction is not good in the red. And tocotrienol seem to be able to do slight, always slightly better than steroid in both directions. And you can read this from here. So this is the actual phenomenon function of the lung rather than some biomarker. And this one here, the same, rather than me reading line by line, you can read it yourself. Clearly, Toko trying to work to abate uh, the condition. Yeah, I only show you neutral film. I did not show you sauna film. The same thing. Delta and gamma Toko trying are the only two that abate both of these two white cells. They kind of like storm into uh, uh, the, the alveolar sac, which is a problem. And again, the amount is about 500.